Hello Minecrafters and welcome to episode 19 of our Let's Play Infinity. And as you can see, we have a hole. Yep, we have a hole. And that is what was dug. That's what we dug out with the Buildcraft Quarry. And then I actually went back over it with the ender quarry so now it's all dirt um, I did just inside this little stone line here well that was the other thing I was going to show you I made a little angel block so I could just place it up here and there. anyways that will be the perimeter of our building and then it will run, I guess it's probably about three or four blocks in from the edge there. Just like that. It'll be lined up with that. But anyways, we have a next item to do. And as you can see, I've got the markers set up here. And I'm going to try something I've actually never done before. Um, and I'll... Oh, good. It did reach. Sweet. So that is the perimeter of our hole and what I'm going to hope works is I want to fill said hole. Well, not fill it. I want to line it. Eh, I'm not going to worry about getting the markers. And uh, so that's what one of the things we're going to be working on this time is. So instead of... Oh, that's another thing I did. Between last episode and this episode, I have a new machine. The Fluid Transposer. Used in making a couple of nifty little items. One of which, a redstone energy cell. So now I don't have to carry around, you know, magmatic dynamos and cables and pipes and lava and all that fun stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to put brick stones and line the hole. And we're also going to find out how good my math is. And see if I got it right. So, yep, yeah, that should be extract. We'll put that in to make it a little bit faster. And it should fill the bottom. And then line the sides. Oh, shoot. But I've got to make it this. Frame, flatten, fill, box. There. I hope I didn't... I hope I got that done in time. Should be, because it's still just doing the bottom. All right, so... Hmm. Wow, why did it jump up there? I hope I didn't mess something up by not having that set right. Which I guess I could stop it and restart it. Oh well, we'll see what it does. I mean, worst case scenario, I can redo it. But we'll see. Um, I decided to go... Well, I'm not going to mess with that now. It's doing its thing. And I think I've got some extras in here, maybe. Ah. I decided to go with these just because they're plentiful. Uh, I've got quite a bit of stone because I went back through all of that with the ender quarry and it has silk touch so ended up with a lot of stone. The other thing I really like about stone is you can break it and it doesn't turn into something else as would um, uh, well like stone does it turns into cobblestone things like that. So anyways we'll let that do its thing. And actually, I think the next thing that I'm wanting to do, I have to wait for this to get done. So i tell you what, I'll go ahead and pause this, and I'll bring you back once we get closer to done on it. Be right back. Okay, so we are actually nearing the end of progression here, and it actually looks pretty cool. Um, something I had thought about afterwards, um, after I had paused it and all that, I actually thought about, you know, I should have recorded it and just done, you know, 
like time lapse or speed it up or whatever because that that would have been really interesting but now we are coming to the moment of truth to find out how good my math was and we shall see oh I was close I was I was very close I was one string off. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, that's like 43, 43, 45, something like that. All right, so. Let's see what that does. Ta-da! And it is now done. So yes, we, we now have our, our little hole filled, well, lined. So, next we're going to light it. Well, we're going to light the bottom of it anyways. And there's actually a way that I do that works really well. And that is using glowstone nooks. Um, very handy, handy little item. And basically you get them by cutting up glowstone. And you can take a full glowstone, cut it down into nooks, and you'll actually get 32 of these little nooks from one glowstone block. Um, and the reason I really like it is because it gives off just as much light as a full glowstone stick or full glowstone block. So what I want to do is I'm going to go around. Um, where's, where's my pick? Hmm. That's not good. That's very odd. Unless it's the normal thing of, you know, it's right in front of me and I'm just not seeing it. But nope, I'm not seeing it. And double check in here again, not up there. Well, shoot. Hopefully, I just dumped it and it went. Well, this isn't good at all because it's not in here either. So hold on just a minute. Let me check around a few places and I'll see if I can find my pickaxe. Mental note, when you have a rechargeable tool, don't forget to lose, or don't lose it in the charger. So, there you go. <laughs> oh, some days. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to take my little pickaxe. Alright, I got something going on here. Take my pickaxe, and let's see. I want to break the ones at the corners. Like that. And then, I'm going to go, there you are. I can just right, well, can I right click? Um, there. Okay, now I can right click it in there. And so you just do like that. And then, as you can see, it branches out. So then I'll take and put these here. And then just place the cover over top of it. And, I mean, honestly, you'd never even know they were there. Except for the fact that, you know, it's lit. And so then I'll go to where the little lines cross. There. Just like that. And then... It's not wanting to right-click for some reason. I guess maybe the nook just doesn't like to work that way. And uh, keep on doing that all the way around until we have everything lit up. And 
and once we run out, get this done real quick. Yep, and now we're out. Um, let's see. I think I got my saw. Yep. And all this is, um, you just make that with three stone rods and two sticks and flint. And I mean, some people make them out of diamond and they last a lot longer, but flint is really cheap. So I just make the flint ones. And so then you just take a stone, put it in here, run it through until you can't. Might help if I get all of them out. Oh, goodness. Normally I should click it, so. All right. Let's put this back together. That way I can do it from the beginning and do it right. Okay. Put the saw up here. Put your stone there and shift click. And just keep on doing that until it won't go through anymore. And then you take it from under it and put it beside if you want to make uh, strips. And then you can put the strips in on the side and make the nooks. But I'm wanting the covers right now. So I am going to finish out this and then we'll be right back for the next project. Okay, so I've got all the lights put in and figured I'd wait till dark to kind of give you an idea what it'll look like. So basically what you've got is all the lights are under the plates. And so you have a well-lit area, um, but you don't have torches, lights, and all that stuff hanging around. So that covers that part of this episode. So that's it. See you later. <laughs> Yeah, my episodes are never that short. So, I have a diamond dolly. Yay. Because in the diamond dollies, there's usually stuff. And one thing I've been running into is power issues. Um, having to move magmatics here and there and everywhere and even, you know, breaking down and using cells and all that stuff. So, dun-dun-dun. I thought we would play with reactors this episode... So, last time I did a, what, 7x7x9? Seven by 7 by by 8 something like that. It was 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. Then when I moved and converted it to Steam, then I made it a little bit bigger. But I've got a different build this time. So, let me get the perimeter and all that stuff laid out. And uh, we'll get started on this. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so I thought I'd give you a little progress update here real quick. Uh, I've got my reactor controller in the middle. I've got my reactor redstone port, my reactor power tap, uh, and then on the opposite side, just to even things out, the reactor access port and the other access port, which I guess I could put them over here so it'd all be on the same side. Yeah, we'll do that. I was trying to even it out, but we'll just make it all on one side and then I can eventually build it to look like a little control center and, and all that stuff over here. Mm. I'll put it there. And there. Now, I've actually been doing a little bit of reading. Um, and I actually found something really cool and there is a thing online that you can do um, demos of different reactor setups and things like that and I'll put a link down below but by using that is actually how I came up with the design that I am going to be doing on this one and I've actually learned well that's not good why did it shut down? Well, hold on just a minute, and I'll get this hopefully back up and running. Okay, well, that was, I was going to say fun, but yeah, no, not really. All right, so, um, grab all this stuff, and that should be it for that. And, uh, yeah, I guess I could just go ahead and see if I can't drag this over here. And I don't know if it'll show up, but if it does, you can see here what I'm going to be doing. But 
Well, like I said, I'll leave you a link down below to to show you what it looks like. Um, I think I should be recording by page, so I'll talk about it. If not, I'll edit this part out. But anyways, it's br.sidoh.org is how you get to the Big Reactor Simulator. And it lets you put in um, all the different things. You can put diamond in, and you can actually watch the numbers change as you're doing it. Um, so I came up with this setup. And one of the things that I have found is from the Eulorium, um the control rods and, and all that, it's pretty much only registering from compass points. So up, down, left, right, diagonal, doesn't matter. So I'm going to be putting glass in those areas to try and save on some resources. Um, like I said, I have not built this yet. I have just played with it in the simulator. Uh, so your guess is as good as mine as to how this will turn out. Actually, your guess might be better than mine because I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, I, I looked on some different forums and, and things like that to try and come up with what seemed like a, a better build, uh, more efficient, and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully this will work out well. Uh, let's see. So I've got... The carbon between, like that, and I do wish I had a builder's wand. And these are just going to be vacant areas. That one, and there, there. Basically outside the carbon blocks. And then once I get up to the top, I'll put in my in uh, the liquid ender, liquid ender, and let that run down. And so, like I said, hopefully this will be a a fairly resource friendly way to build. So we shall see. I'm also interested to see how close it keeps number wise. To uh, to the simulator, that should be interesting. Which I mean, it's it's all numbers and calculations and, and all that stuff anyway. So, yeah, you know, one would think that you could make a calculator for it, which is pretty much what what that website has done. So I'm not going to make y'all you know watch me hop around and dance and do all this stuff trying to get this built. So I'll go ahead and pause the recording again, get this up to the top, and uh, then I'll be right back. Okay, so I thought I'd bring you back in on the last layer here. So just capping off these. And one thing I will say about the simulator is it's it seems to be pretty much dead on as far as... Um, letting you know what materials you need because it actually uh, lets you break down everything um, and I mean I'm literally haven't had hardly anything left over uh, I will say that I did mess up and make too many uh, casings and we'll see how the rest goes um, so yeah now the resonant ender will, I believe, when it's configuring this, it is figuring filling every space. So it it <laughs> it really overestimates the amount needed. So I just kind of counted it out myself, and then I changed my setup. So I should even have more left over than. I would have so basically where you've seen me put the carbon blocks was going to be ender so we'll see how this works out like I said my biggest thing is I want to see how close 
to reality this thing is as in you know how how accurate are the numbers on the simulator so all right let's let's cap this off and we'll look at the numbers on the simulator then we'll cut this on and see what comes of it hmm does it not like the glass fused quartz is not valid for reactors interior that's not fused quartz well shoot Hmm. All right. Give me a minute and let me. Did it teleport that glass? I bet it did. I know I heard it, but I wonder where it went. That's neat. Oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, well, let me clear this out, and we'll see what else I can put in there. So I might just take the glass out, and uh, I don't know. I thought I could put glass in there. Oh, hold on just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so I swapped out the quite clear glass for regular glass, and hopefully this will work. We'll soon find out. Anyway, I guess I don't really have to have it in there. It just kind of makes it easier to set up and all and I don't I don't worry with you know the glass sides and all that because it's going to be down here yay it worked I mean it's going to be down here I'm going to be up there I'm really not going to see this so there is our 9x9 nine nine. and it almost looks like a face with eyes and a nose and a mouth Hey, it's smiling at us. <laughs> okay, so here we... All right. I'm not sure what's causing this crash, but hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, so hopefully it'll step a little longer this time. There was one other thing I forgot to do, and that is to set the control rods because I actually want these set at I think 83 um, shift alt for one yep okay and then go to the next one and this one Oh, wait, what was that? Control change all rods. See if that worked. Oh, sweet, that works. That way it is exactly as I have it on the demo, or not demo, the simulator. Now, we'll bring the page back, and according to this, with um let's see with the control rod insertion at 83 percent on a direwolf setup which is basically what this is um it just the direwolf thing it changes the uh the amount that you use so we're not going to worry too much about this one right here but we'll use the rest of it and see how it works out so it says that at this settings i'll have 10,100 rf a tick so, let's fire it up, and I need Eulorium. I bet it won't do anything right now. And as soon as I can get this thing fired up and going, I might have to end this episode and see if I can't figure out what issues I have got going on. Um, save the crash log, and it looked like it said something about a, a tick issue or something like that. I'm not sure. 
But we'll find out. Hopefully. Alright. Leap of faith. Chet's right at the bottom. <laughs> Alright, so this is my input. And we'll make this... Nope, there we go. Output over there. Input over here. Dump all this in. Mercy, how much is that thing going to take? Uh, Alright, we'll go back and get some more. Which, I mean, it... There are quite a few of those those rods in there, but I'm it should be fairly efficient, so hopefully it won't use it that fast. And of course I'll I'll make a way to, you know, send the Lorium down there and, and all that. That way I'm not having to manually take it. Alright, jetpack at thirty five percent. Okay, now we're full. Now, I said 10,100 RF attack at full power. So let's see what she comes up to. Now this... Hmm, not sure what that's going to be at. Let's see. Temperature should be right at 600. The um, saturation looks dead on. 10,100. That's, that's right on it. So I would say this is pretty good. We're bouncing right at 600 here. And the other thing said 601.4. So yeah, I, I would call this a success. Now, let me bring the sheet back over here. One of the other things you can do on this is you can also take this and flip it over to actively control or actively cooled and you'll see the RF flip over to steam. And so now with these exact same settings, there we go, that should be closer to what it's supposed to be. Let's see. 86. 69, actually a little bit better. Okay, anyways, like I was saying, you can take this and flip it over to actively cooled, and it will tell you how much steam you're putting out. And so then we can take this rod insertion, bring it all the way to zero, and we can actually put out 27,000 buckets of steam a tick. So that will run hmm, 13 turbines. Yeah, I think I'm going to like this. But as it is, we currently have power. And, I mean, even at, let's see, 69, we'll call it 0.7 millibuckets per tick. So, let's see what it says over here. Put the settings back on that web page. Um, that's going to be 13 RF block. No, that ain't what I'm looking for. 11,600 11, RF a millibucket. So, anyways, I know, a bunch of numbers. But anyways, like I said, I'll post the link to the uh, big reactor simulator down below so that y'all can look it up and play around with this too. So, I guess next... Well, let me go ahead and cut that off. I need a way to get power up to the house. So I need some Tesseracts. Oh, I forgot the chest. Oh, well. Nothing in it but air. <laughs> so I don't guess I really need that. And I did not pre-build for the Tesseracts. Um, let's see. What all do I need? That stuff isn't a problem. The frame. Uh, I've got the fluid transposer now. Uh, I think I've got all this. So, 
Yeah, let me take this, um, reset that. I want this to go that way. Yep, that. And reset you. And I want you to output there. And let's see, I need four, eight. Eight of you. I know I've got some in the bucket and in that tank and all that, but I'll just go ahead and make some more. All right, now what was it I needed? Was it eight of these, I believe? And not quite clear. Hardened for that. And diamond, that should be here. That's where I was making my blocks. That's where I was making that. Okay, put that there. Mm, which one goes in the middle? Okay. This one goes in the middle. This one goes on the outside. Grab those out. And 2000 Ender. There we go. Oh wow, you put that over here now. That's interesting. And so that'll take just a second. So I can go ahead and get bronze and silver. Do, do, do. And silver. I was running out of space, so I ended up having to block a bunch of my stuff here. All right, that one's ready. Now. And I'll go ahead and run this one around and this one around. So I've got it for the next one. Put the frame in, take the that one out. Oh, they won't stack. Oh, that's disappointing. Unified point in space time. Can transfer items, fluids, and RF. Sweet. Now all I have to do is set up something to trigger this when it needs to come on. Let's see, that's that's my redstone port. That's my power port. I'm hoping this will work. I can't remember. Hmm. So I can't remember if it will work directly on it or if I need to have um, some kind of redstone conduit or something like that, but we'll see. All right, we'll call that 11. Main power. And we want this to energy send only. And we'll cut those two off. So we should always be getting power through this, provided it's working. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see the lag spike when you're flying right up there at the very top. Yeah, I don't know if that's a Java issue that's causing me to crash or what. but I'm certainly interested to see about getting that fixed. Okay, let me dig this out. This actually got filled in when I was doing all the filler work. All right, grab all those out. Hmm. Take down one more. Make sure I've got all these out. Now, I'll go ahead and just slap that down right there. And I want you on that, and I want you receiving energy. Not too worried about those. Make sure that's disabled. Um, hmm, let's throw something in there. Well, I can dump it all in here. That'll work. Let's see, what else? Throw that in there, and that. Hmm. 
that and that over here throw in put my eulorium bag up put that back up there and get my tools mm, I get that and then space click now um what was I doing oh right I have to use power so we'll do it this way because I know of something that uses a lot of power okay because I've actually converted this to all so we'll see how that does hmm. well it looks like it's using but I can't tell if it's recharging any Actually, I don't want to run the Ferris through there. Oh, I can run it through the other. Uh, one thing I have learned, and I don't have it set up now. Shoot. Make sure you run your Ferris through your pulverizer. And the reason is, is because you have a 10% chance of getting shiny as a byproduct. And that is used in quite a few things. So, yeah. Might be a good idea to do that. And it's very possible I need a redstone of some sort. Oh, shoot, that's only going to give me five. <laughs> Let's see. Get out of the hole. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's not that one. I know it's a green one. it's this one. Oh wait, I need binder. And I'm not going to have any binder in there. Mercy, I feel like I'm just running around lost all over the place. Binder. I want to make sure that's the right one before I do this. That's fluid. Oh no, vibrant. Uh, do I have any vibrant made? Yes, I do. Okay, run that across. And wrap it with that. We'll go back down below. And I've got my wrench, so I can take it down. Probably should recharge my pack here before too long. Alright, take that off. And while not ideal, this will work. I hope. So then we'll just stick that on the side. And you're still set control status. Ignored, signal required, ignored. Might help if I cut that on. Duh. Yeah, I probably didn't actually need that cable, but now well, it's there. And here I was worried about running short on this episode. Oh yeah, it's keeping up power now. Oh, all right, that's over there. Sweet. Um, yeah, we're working. Um, wonder how fast it's pulling out of that down there. Geronimo! And I'm going to miss that one of these times. I just know it. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's, I think that's doing pretty well. I can cut it back on for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think this will, we'll call it done. So I guess that will do it for this episode. Down here in our little pit of power. <laughs> I just made that up. Pit of power. Okay, but anyways, um, I've got a few plans for this little area. Um, I just, you know, I needed the materials, so I dug it out. And, you know, since I dug it out, I figured I may as well go ahead and use it. So I think this is going to be rather interesting. Kind of like the layout. But, yeah, I've, I've not ever done anything quite like this, so we'll see how this works out. 
and look up here for my bird's eye view. I might leave this here just as a kind of like a little lookout. Oh, make sure I got flight if I'm doing it. Where'd it go? Oh, I've got lost my block here. Ta da! <laughs> Pretty bad. I got two feet and I do a three point landing. Oh, mercy. I'm like, right. Okay. I should know better than to try and do that while I'm outer body experience. <sighs> okay. Finally. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you liked it, please click like below. And if you have any questions, want to make any suggestions, any questions about the reactor, I probably won't be able to answer them because I don't know a lot about them. Uh, I pretty much did a lot of reading. I took some suggestions. I looked at some builds took what I liked from each one, and I played around with that simulator. And like I said, I will post a link to the simulator down below. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and post a link that should take you to my setup. Uh, so that, you know, if you want to make one just like what I did, you are more than welcome. And But I don't know if I would, because you'd probably be able to come up with one better. But anyways, that's the show for today. I'm Jim Slate. Take care, and God bless.